to a craze killer. Stalking us outside, he's struck three times already, and the police seem powerless to stop him. The first victim, Francis Ryle, a 29-year-old small-time racketeer, but this is no gangland slave. Victim number two, Johnny Fleischmann, a successful car salesman and businessman found dead in an alley. And the third victim, gambling ex-boxer Eddie Babyface Bates, gunned down and dumped among the garbage cans. Chicago wonders, where will the executioner strike next? Way I remember, it was a Tuesday, back in the summer of 1952. Some nacho was cruising the city, throwing up cops as decorated with a single slug to the head, and dollar bills ran into the kisser. The executioner, the papers called him. There'd been three stiffs already. The city was screaming, and the cops hadn't got a clue. <laughs> but then I'm not a cop. Samalo Investigations, how may I help you? Oh, hello, Mr. Kaufman. I'm afraid Mr. Malloy's not here right now, sir. Yes, I will. The minute he gets in. Okay. Goodbye, sir. <laughs> That's my girl. Sam, Kaufman's called three times already today. You better give him some news on that 20 grand. And fast. Yeah, yeah, I'll call him. Do it now. I don't want him chewing on my ear again while you're daydreaming. <laughs> I'd only be dreaming of you. Oh, my God. Annie. You knew her? Annie Lowitz. She was my best friend. We grew up together over in Maywood. Gee, Velma, um, I'm so sorry. She worked at the Blue Flamingo. Taking pictures. I told her not to take the job. I must have seen her last night. <gasps> well, Sam, you gotta find out who did this. I'll find him, honey. Anything for my favorite girl. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Blue Flamingo, Chicago's home of fine entertainment. We've got a great show lined up for you this evening, so let's get right to it with our beautiful Flamingo dancers. Club over on 47th Street, the place Annie Lowitz had worked and the place that linked all the bodies together. Everybody had a story to tell about it, and each one was crazier than the last. See, this was the black and town joint on the south side. It didn't matter if you were white or colored, so long as you had a throw to throw, nobody gave a damn what you were or how you got there. Now this is the joint's owner, Earl the Pearl Frazier, so called because of his habit of wearing pearl cufflinks. Rumor was, Earl would get a new set every time he disappeared a guy, and rumor was, he had boxes full of them. The door with the loaded rack, Sugar Can Dichi, Earl's girl, lucky schmuck. God damn it, I said by the night, I mean by the night. Dealing with Earl, I knew I was dancing with the devil. Well, sure and if I, I wanted to keep my feet, I'd have to move like I could show Gene Kelly a step or two. But yeah, right then, I didn't have too many choices. It ain't like the first time he's had Oh, baby, hush now. You know I don't like it when you talk about your work. Well, if you don't like it, why'd you sit here, huh? What I didn't know was what else the Flamingo had in store for me. So Sam, what are you looking for? I was talking to Earl, but <laughs> if you got something to say. You, uh, you seem to know it all already. Anyway, I thought these killings were cop business. Let's talk. 
What do you know? About the murders? Well, not a thing. But, uh, if you want to continue your investigations, well, I'm happy to help. Gloria Devane, hotter than Kansas in July. I didn't know at the time, but this little lady was gonna change my life. I didn't do nothing! <laughs> hey, Lena, leave Riley alone, please. Oh, come on, she's only having a little bit of fun. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> We're going over the opening number. Needs a little work. Okay. Lena, hurry up, get up some stage. And five, six, seven, eight. Where's Earl? Uh, Mr. Frazier's is busy right now, but if you'd uh, like to leave a message. Don't tell me what I can or can't do. Earl don't own me. Okay, I guess it's about time the cops showed up. And this one's a doozy. Mike Branning, chief of police in Chicago's finest. Or oh, that's what he'll like you to think. But believe me, there's more to this guy than a badge and a bag of donuts. Wasn't a buy in the city, he didn't have a finger in. The other guy's Kowalski. He's a stand-up guy, a war hero, and just maybe the only clean cop in Chicago. Okay, let's ask these dumb whores. Hey, who you calling whore? Yeah. Gee, officer, what seems to be the problem? Diner fresh out of donuts. Nah, you better cut the sass, sweetie. Unless you want me to bring you a tea. Ah, for what? I'll think of something. <clears throat> Gee, good police work, chief. Fabricating false charges again. What's the matter? Solving real crimes too hard for you. Come in. Hey, hey, uh, hey, you better watch your mouth, bitch. Get down. I'm real scary, chief. My face. No, wait, look. We trying to catch this son of a bitch. Look, the only lead we got is this club, and you girls get the best seat in the house. Now, are you sure you ain't seen no one acting strange? Don't you think we've been through it a hundred times after Annie died? If we could, we would. Well, it probably don't mean nothing. But there's this guy who sits up front. He sent all those awful letters to Evie. Remember? Yeah, they were kind of scary. What's this guy's name? His name is Dawson. Hey, hands up. Oh, yeah, but if I could just get your picture, you're so pretty. Come on, buddy, that's enough. So where does this guy live? South Shore, 67th Street, he said. 67th Street, huh? Uh -huh. Then we go pay Mr. Dawson a little visit. Chief, you got nothing on this guy. You're desperate and you know it. Okay, Dawson. How many more times do I have to listen to this bullshit? You're gonna burn this, you hear me, boy? You're gonna fry it. Please, Mr. Manning, I swear to you, I didn't do it. I confess, you son of a bitch. Come on, 